Hi, welcome back to Scripture Explorers. I'm James. And I'm Aria. And we're the Scripture Explorers. Did you hear that? I don't know about this. Know about what? Me and Ari are gladiators. We're fighting in the arena. That sounds awfully dangerous. Do your parents know about this? It's just for pretend. Oh, I see. Do you have to fight other gladiators? We've already defeated the other guys. Now comes the hard part. What's the hard part? Fighting a lion. He sounds big. Well, can you imagine facing not just one lion, but a whole group of them? That's what happened to Daniel. Was he a gladiator? Actually, he was a young man who became a powerful prophet. Remember when we talked about the prophet Ezekiel and others being taken captive into Babylon? Among the prisoners were four young men, four friends named Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those are funny names. They were Israelites who had always been faithful to their Jewish faith. These four were selected to live in the palace and learn the ways of Babylon, but they kept following the sacred Jewish traditions and rules and became very wise and healthy as a result. They were blessed with so much wisdom that Daniel was later able to translate dreams for the king with the help of the spirit. Just like Joseph did in Egypt. Right. The king of Babylon at the time was named Nebuchadnezzar, Another funny name. The king was so impressed with the friends that he promoted them in his kingdom. But Nebuchadnezzar didn't always make the best decisions. He built a golden statue of himself and commanded the people to bow down to it. Everyone there bowed down to worship the statue, except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh oh. When they refused to worship the idol, the king ordered the three of them to be thrown into a fiery furnace and burned to death. But Nebuchadnezzar was in for a surprise. Instead of dying in the fire, the three young men appeared to be standing inside the furnace, unhurt. In fact, he could see a fourth person in the furnace with them. When they came out again perfectly unharmed, Nebuchadnezzar knew that an angel had been inside with them, protecting them. But still the rulers of Babylon didn't learn their lesson. When a new king named Darius took over, he too kept Daniel in a high position in his court. Other court officials didn't like that very much. They schemed for a way to get rid of Daniel and convince King Darius to pass a law saying the people could only worship him. Anyone caught praying to someone other than the king would be thrown into a den of lions. When Daniel continued praying to God despite the law, they reported to Darius what Daniel had done. Darius felt that he had to punish Daniel in order to be fair to everyone else. To follow the law, Darius agreed that Daniel should be thrown into the lion's den. What? Before Daniel was put into the den, Darius told him that he hoped God would save him. After Daniel was sealed inside with a giant boulder, Darius went home and fasted and prayed for Daniel's deliverance. Daniel was left inside with the lions all night, and everyone else was sure that he would be eaten alive. In the morning, Darius went back down to the entrance of the tomb as they rolled the boulder away. Everyone was shocked to see that Daniel was fine. He explained that an angel had come and shut the lion's mouth so they couldn't eat him, just as an angel had saved his friends from the fiery furnace. Twice, God delivered those who obeyed him. Whew, that was close. This miracle helped King Darius see that the God of Israel was the true God. Darius sent around a proclamation to all his people proclaiming that they should worship only Heavenly Father. That's how Daniel, facing a whole group of lions, helped bring others to God. And the Lord will do the same thing for us. If we obey him and have faith, he can protect us from the beasts and fires in our own lives. We might not always be spared physically from any suffering, but spiritually we can be saved no matter what we come up against. I guess if Daniel could face all those hungry lions, we could face just one. Yeah, we can do it! Excuse us, we've got some winning to do.